I hope you feel comfortable with these exercises, at least what I saw on the quiz last time. Well, pretty good. So let me try something similar to what we had on the quiz to warm up. So let's try problem number 39 that says, how about if we factor our numerator of fraction such as a uh, x minus nine and x plus nine. And I noticed that exact same expression we have in denominator, it's a sum of x and nine. So this enables me to simplify to cancel that same exact parentheses to get x minus nine. In fact, most problems here are in such a way that you factor in order to cancel. And that actually gives us awesome hints to how we work out those exercises. So when I'm looking at fraction and exercise number 43, that has denominator x squared minus 25, then Analogously to the previous problem, I'm going to factor it with a sum and a difference multiplied by each other, x plus 5 and x minus 5. And then what I can do is try to get the factoring of my numerator using the same factor. I'm going to use x minus 5 to factor my numerator and see if that works. So to get first term, which is x squared factor, they need to multiply first terms here, x and x, right? And then to get the last term, which is negative 15 factor, they need to multiply minus 5 by plus 3, and then see if that worked or not. It looks like it almost worked, because the middle product is negative 5x, and the product of terms on the outside is positive 3x. But I don't get a 2. I do have negative 2x terms, right? So to get positive, to get the opposite sign, I just switch my signs here. So I put instead of x minus 5, x plus 5, and instead of x minus three, x plus three. So actually x minus three. And this way, the sign in the middle changes, multiplying five by x, you got five x, and then outside is minus three x. So now we can simplify and get the exact same answer as they have here in the textbook. So it looks like we're done with this factoring. If someone says, Alex, can I actually cancel x and x? Well, that's a very bad idea because you cancel only factors. If you have 3 over 5, then when you multiply 3 by x, and then when you divide it by x, you put x in denominator, then yes, then you can cancel when it's multiplied, when we have factors. But if we don't have factors, but if we just deal with the x and then minus number 3 on the top and x minus 5 on the bottom, you cannot cancel. You get the answer. And that's all it is. So we simplified this all the way through. <clears throat> so the point of this section is you can cancel only when factored. And the other interesting observation here in the practice exercises is that you get hint how to be able to factor and then you'll be able to actually cancel your expression. So let me try exercise number 45. I'm going to copy this 
entire fraction. So we better see how we can approach this factoring. So there's 2a squared plus 5a and plus 3, which is here in numerator. So now I'm going to look at the denominator of this fraction. And notice that it's very straightforward to take out number three from it, right? <clears throat> so denominator, I think it's much nicer to factor because numerator has three terms, polynomial. And then I'm gonna use this denominator factor a plus three to help me work my numerator out. So 2a will be multiplied by a to give me 2a squared. And then I need to use positive one, right? Because we multiply one and three and we get what we need, the last number three. So we we'll always check and see if this is going to work or not really. But when you say, Alex, looks like it's not working because you got a 6a and the a. So what is wrong? Well, I think what is wrong is that Alice did not wake up yet because it's actually two supposed to be here in the parentheses, right? Because when you distribute your three back, you have to have six of these A's. Uh -huh. So that changes everything. So now we need to have parentheses, not like I put, but instead of A plus three, I must have two A plus three. So let me clear this and uh, actually put the parentheses that I need. It's actually 2a plus 3 here, right? And then we're going to have to multiply 2a by a and 3 by 1. It looks like this be the way to go because we have 3a, the product of the inside terms, and 2a is a product of terms on the outside. And that's exactly 5a in the middle that I needed, and that enables me to cancel this 2a plus 3 factor. It really didn't want to be canceled. It was hiding from us, but can't hide. So the answer is here, a plus 1 on the top and divided by 3 on the bottom. So it looks like we have to continue using factorings and canceling throughout this entire section. So let us just practice some more. How about exercise number 47, the next one? How would you start factoring your numerator and your denominator in order to cancel something? So it looks like numerator is probably nice to factor because it has pretty much no choices for factoring. Actually, denominator is similar because when you prepare factors for the numerator, then x squared will be factored with a two x's, right? And the last number, positive one, I factor with plus one times another plus one. So there is no choice but to utilize x plus one for my lower part for my bottom part. So the other factor will be x plus three. And this way we're going to be able to simplify this and we get the exact same answer as they just produced. So in this exercises, you just can't see the answer right away. You need to prepare your factoring polynomial first. So let me prepare an exercise 49 by noticing that four is common in all of the three terms of numerator. So why don't I take it out? Four will stay on the outside and we're gonna have x squared and plus six x and also plus eight, right? That's my numerator that I will start factoring. 
And denominator looks like number eight is what I can take out. So we're going to have in the parentheses two with x squared, right? And then there is a eight and then minus six, isn't it? Six times eight is 48. So let us try to factor what we have here. And some people can say, Alex, you can divide by four and instead of eight, just have two left on the bottom. And I guess that's a good start. And we have our numerator factoring with x plus and x plus because everything is positive here. And eight, I can factor with four and two. So this is my start. And notice that four plus two is six indeed. And then I need to start thinking about factors of my denominator. So it looks like the only choice that I can have for a factor of my denominator is here, x plus two. The reason is that we have six here. So four is not gonna go into six. So why don't I put x plus two already on the bottom and then see what be the next factor. Well, <clears throat> the first term should give me 2x because 2x times x is 2x squared. And then negative number three. Let's see if that works or not. See, you always wanna check if it works and if there's some kind of misprint like I already produced today, well, then you can always discover it. So it's not a big deal, you just need to try. So when I put together numbers, two times two is four X and negative three is also multiplied by X, I get a X and notice that I wasn't careful because here in the middle, there is no eight. There is just X because we actually factored eight out, remember? So it's important that you concentrate and tell me if something is not done correctly because otherwise I could just write anything. And the idea is that you should try over the weekend to get a piece of paper, pen or pencil and redo the same exact problems again. And that's actually a way to learn. So when I cancel this X plus twos, it looks like the answer that they have for us here is exactly what we've produced. So it looks like these exercises are all about factoring and canceling and using so-called hints to help us to do this. And the hints will be factoring what you think is easier first, and then try to get the more challenging expression worked out. I can take a look at exercise number 51 here that wants us to look at the even worse looking expression. The top of it is with two parentheses, x squared minus one and x plus one. Please notice that x squared minus one is one of our old favorite factorings, right? And the bottom part is what I need to actually think of breaking down into the product of two factors. So let me start with numerator. X minus one times X plus one, right? And then we have another X plus one here for us. Okay, so what about denominator? Well, in denominator, I factor my first term x squared with x and x, and then minus one times minus one to factor plus one, right? Because we have here two negatives that give us positive. Notice that everything is squared, so I should also square these factors. And it looks like I can cancel here a little bit. I can cancel this x minus 
one, right? So on the bottom, if I cancel x minus one, then for the first factor, for example, I'll get rid of one of these parentheses. So on the bottom then, then x minus one will appear raised to the power of three, right? Because we have x minus one squared, so there are two of them factors, and one more, so the product of three. But on the top, I'll have just power of two. But that's okay. It doesn't really matter for us what power we have, as long as we are able to factor and cancel, and then, well, whatever remains will give you the answer. So that's the way we go about this exercises. So let us see what else we can do here. And I guess I'm gonna just move on to the next section because it just does nothing but continues the same exact thing. It just deals with more and more fractions. So I think that these two sections actually nicely go together and do exact same thing factorings and cancelings and factorings and cancelings again. So I don't think I want to give you a quiz on this right now because that'd be a little bit too much. So maybe over weekend you can practice a little bit more and then we'll see what happens next time. So look at the exercise here. 25. I can definitely factor its denominator with x minus and x plus two, right? So I don't copy, I just factor and write what we have here. So x plus two, I think I can use to factor my upper part because if I multiply it with a difference of x and three, then we're gonna get exactly what is needed here. Let us double check. The middle product is 2x, right? And the product on the outside is minus 3x. So we have exactly minus x here. So that's awesome start. And I also can cancel. Why not? I can cancel this same x plus 2. Okay, that's a nice start. Let me see what we can do about the second fraction. It looks like now we need to factor our numerator with only choice I have on the bottom with x minus two. Look at this. I'm using the hint. This is my hint. And I'll put it for a factor of numerator. So if I multiply this by x plus one, right? Then I'll get exactly the factoring that I need. How about that? The product on the outside terms is minus 2x, and the product of terms of the inside is minus 2x, and the outside is plus x. And indeed, we've got that result. Okay, so we deserve to cancel x minus 2, just like that. So what's remaining for us to factor? This 9 minus x squared, okay, it's going to be 3 minus x multiplied by 3 plus x, just like that, 3 plus x. Notice that I have a numerator x minus 3. I don't have 3 minus x. And it turns out that I can turn 3 minus x into x minus 3 if I multiply it by negative 1. So people say we can commute the terms of our difference if minus 1 is out. So what's going to stay on the bottom then? Well, I just write minus one times x minus three. <clears throat> That's what's left. And then there is also three plus x. It's still here. It's still waiting for its turn. So 
I'm going to copy numerator as well because it's x minus 3 left over from first fraction, and that's just what I need. And then also x plus 1. So doing this, I deserved to cancel my x minus 3s in here. And the answer is produced. And if you look at the answer that they have for the exercise, it's exactly what we produced in here. So it looks like problems get longer. The problems get tedious. But if you keep in mind your goal, and the goal is to factor with the same factors, so then you can cancel them, well, they'd be pretty straightforward exercises. So let me do one more, and maybe that should be good enough, because otherwise it's getting a little bit too much. Of course, on the exams, I don't ask exercises of this type, but I think it's a good practice that you can see how they factored, because in the next math class, you're going to actually get pretty much the same problems done again. In fact, if you did not register for the summer semester, I highly recommend you to sign up for college algebra class. It's 11.05, MAC 11.05. Schedule of classes is already available. In fact, I will be also teaching this MAC 11.05 class in the summer two session. And I think it's also in the summer one. So if you wanna take a summer two to get yourself a little bit of a break, after this semester, because it's gonna start at the end of June. You just take the schedule and see that I have that class in the same format, like we do it right now in the format of, uh, it's called MDC Live. So I'll just do it on the online environment. You don't have to come to the college. You can just save some money on gas and just take this class and the second portion of the summer. So the advice is sign up for it as soon as you can. Don't wait for too long because those classes, they get filled up and closed. So anyways, let me try to factor my numerator. Remember when we have four terms, we we'll always try to factor out so-called common factors here. Let me clean this a little bit. So that was x cubed, right? So that's exercise 28. So what I can do is notice that first group has a common factor x to the power of, did I copy it, right? It's three x. I think I started to copy the other Exercise, I should be careful. I need to concentrate. So it's actually plus three X only without a square. So the first is actually X to the second power. So you started it correctly. And then the other two terms is Y X and three Y. Uh -huh. So this I better clean. So let me write it again. See, it never hurts to double check the exercise, how you copied it because otherwise you're never going to get the answer you need, right? So it's minus y times x, and then plus 3y. It's yx and 3y. Okay, looks like now it's better. So looks like letter x is what I can take out here, and then x plus 3 will be in the parentheses, right? Remember, I need to have same parentheses. I need to have x plus 3 in my second group. So I'm going to take out positive y. And this enables me to write the factoring. x plus 3 will be my first factor. 
And then X plus Y will be the second one. Okay, how about denominator? Well, looks like that's our favorite X plus three times X minus three. See, the point is when you encountered such a big fraction, the last thing you wanna do is panic because a little by little, you just uh, factor and then you cancel and then you enjoy the process. It's not hard at all. So we cancel X plus three with another X plus three and X minus three with another X minus three. And looks like that's all we can possibly cancel. So we left with X plus Y in my numerator and X plus three in my denominator. And this is it. This is the answer. So you can double check that you produced the correct. So I guess it'd be a good idea to stop for today at this stage. As I said, I'm not gonna give you a quiz. Let me take a look at what we have done so far. So I'm going back to my contents of the textbook. So first pages. So it looks like we're already in chapter six, right? So in chapter six, we're gonna keep doing the sections and then we'll also look at chapter seven. And that's pretty much the plan for this rest of the time. So we're already in six two. So I guess we're gonna do section six three and then six five, and then we're gonna move to the later chapter seven and just do as much as we can from it. So this is our plan for the rest of semester. If the time permits, we can also take a look at chapter eight because there is more stuff in it, but Remember, our goal is not to get through the whole book because book is for five unit class. And this class is only three units, so it's like twice less. And that's why if I go to chapter seven, that's already perfect average for the class. And it looks like we are in the good shape. And I'm pretty happy with how you're doing on the tests. And the grades are on the blackboard, remember? I updated those grades a while ago, and you can always see how you're doing in class. You just check blackboard, or you can ask me, because I'm here, I have my grades with me all the time. You can just put a question in the chat, and I will tell you your grade. If you still don't know how to get to the blackboard, and the blackboard, you need to be a little bit persistent. You need to keep clicking on that grade, grade, and then eventually you will see it. Uh, somehow they designed this prog program not very, I guess, useful way. And uh, this is the last semester we're actually using the blackboard. And next semester in the summer, we'll use Canvas. There'll be another program that is, I think, much better. So will utilize Canvas if you decide to take summer class or fall class, there'll be no more Bloodboard. So anyways, you can check your grades. If you have any questions, please let me know. And if you don't have any questions, I'll let you go today without a quiz so you can relax a little bit over weekend, right? <laughs>